OK, so let's just actually go through the uh, Ioannidis um, uh, result and just, just walk through it. So this is a two by two table. The existence of this true relationship in this sort of abstract way is captured in the yes, no. These are relationships that exist. OK, so that's the yes, no on the, you know, in terms of the columns. In terms of the row, this is the case where I, f I reject the null. I have a research finding that rejects the null. That's the yes row. The no row is I don't reject the null. So that's the two by two. The box here is the likelihood that I reject the null and have a true relationship. Like, I reject the null when I should reject the null. That's an important quantity. C is the number of studies, and, and it's going to kind of drop out anyway when we take a ratio in a second. So don't worry about C. 1 minus beta is my power to detect an effect when there is an effect. So that's going to be pretty important. That's like you know, the likelihood that I, I reject the null when I, when I should. And remember, this r over r plus 1 term is important. That's the likelihood there is a real relationship. So you know, in the case where r is really small, I'm probably not going to find a relationship, because there probably isn't a relationship. So out of these C studies, there are going to be very few rejected nulls, just because it's like needle in a haystack research if r is 0.1 or 0.05. The second box we care about is this, this other one, which is the no column. And these are studies where we reject the null when we test in data, but we shouldn't. So these are false positives. So again, there are C studies. The false positive rate is alpha. But this one here is the odds that there is no relationship, but I'm getting a false positive on these C studies. So it's alpha times 1 over r plus 1. So what we care about ultimately is, out of all these observed studies that claim there's a finding, which is this total, the total is just the sum of the first two columns, what share of them are real research findings? So it's the ratio of the box on the left to this you know, highlighted box on the right. Out of all the, the, the findings in the literature, so these are you know, the findings in the literature that say there's an effect, how many of them are real? Given power, given beta, given alpha, given r, given c. This ratio is what they call the positive predictive value. If you find a significant effect, you reject the null, what are the odds that it's actually detecting a true relationship? So this is an important quantity, very straightforward. But it's actually worth sort of staring at this a little bit and thinking about you know, what is beta usually? What is r usually? What is alpha usually? So alpha is usually 0.05. Let's, let's leave that in there. And you know, think of your favorite literature. So let's start with you know, some underpowered field experiments in development economics. Let's say beta is half for some underpowered studies. Maybe you know, 5 out of 20 possible interventions had some sort of effect. So r is a third. So in that case, what is the PPV? It's a half times a third. So that's kind of getting small. Say 0.16 divided by 0.16 plus 0.05. So 0.16 over 0.21. OK. So that isn't terrible. We're going to find worse literatures than that. 70-something percent of the significant results in the literature on education, again, just picking an example of the literature I work in, 70% of those results are probably real. And maybe the other quarter are false positives. OK, that's not great. We'd like it if the PPV were higher than that. I mean, the social psychologist would say, 1 minus beta is usually 0.2. And people are testing wacky stuff where r is 0.1. In that case, 0.2 times 0.1 is 0.02. 0.02 over 0.02 plus 0.05 is really small. That means 28% of studies are re have real results, and 72% of studies are false positives in that kind of literature. So this kind of looks 
so-so. Like I told you, well, I think in development economics, maybe 75, 80% of findings that claim to be true are true. But things can get worse. And this is the, you know, a wrinkle. What if there's some bias, researcher bias? And there's a lot of ways there could be researcher bias. Maybe researchers really want to find significant relationships because it helps them get published. And there's a lot of evidence that's true. We're going to show you tons of evidence that that's true. Maybe they bias their results because there's a very strong paradigm in their field. And if they don't find a certain result, um, either they won't get published or they'll get in trouble with their colleagues. There might be very strong incentives for people to uh, find results that, um, that help their research sponsors. So pharmaceutical companies have a lot of money on the line when they're running clinical trials to show that a certain drug works. Because if it works, they can sell it and make billions of dollars. So researcher bias. Some fraction of non-findings are actually going to be called findings. This complicates things a little bit. Now, what is this column over here where there's no true relationship, but we find a research finding? What is u times 1 minus alpha? Remember, alpha are the false positives. 1 minus alpha are like there's no effect, and we find there's no effect. But u share of the time, we're going to claim there's an effect. And this is a big deal because 1 minus alpha is a really big thing. It's like 0.95. So this conceivably could actually be like a lot of studies that are falsely claimed to be findings when they shouldn't be. Now, there's a flip side to bias. These are relationships that our research design should not allow us to reject the null for, but we do reject the null. And actually, we should reject the null because it's a true relationship we were just underpowered to find. So there is, there's actually more findings that claim to be findings because of bias, but probably a lot more non-findings. OK, so when we go through this exercise, we get the expression here at the bottom of the slide. And what you can see is, for sort of reasonable values of alpha and beta in the kind of reasonable range, is the, people, is the PPV going to rise or fall, the positive predictive value? It's almost certainly going to fall, precisely because 1 minus alpha is big relative to beta. Right? So even if we're kind of underpowered, even if beta is 0.5 uh, or even 0.7, it's smaller than 0.95. It's like almost certainly we have less trust, less faith in a, in a finding, a significant finding when there's research or bias. And that's what your intuition would be. The big question is what is U? And that, again, could vary by field, by norms in different fields. You know, some fields may have different norms of what you show and you don't show. There could be different constraints on researchers in different fields. A lot of what this whole transparency and reproducibility agenda is doing is it's all like a, an attempt to reduce you. That's one branch of this, this kind of set of, of studies and this, this movement. OK, so what else does Ioannidis do? You know, he kind of lists out different combinations of power um, R, again, is this notion of plausibility and bias, and gives examples in different literatures. This is kind of neat. Now, it's very medical-focused, as you can see, unfortunately. It would be kind of neat to put together the equivalent, <coughs> what our prior is in different social science fields. But you know, his best case is, like, imagine you have a well-powered study, 80% power, in a field where there's sort of even odds that there's an effect, you know, R equals 1, and maybe a little bias. Then if you see a result, you can be pretty confident it's true. So this is sort of his best case. But then he looks at some other cases that may be more typical. Like remember in social psychology, maybe there's a lot of really underpowered studies, 0.2. Maybe there's a lot of needle in a haystack research. They're looking for kind of really weird effects um, and a fair amount of bias. Then um, you know, maybe only a quarter of the results are believable. And that's a big difference. That means the typical result you read about you should throw out. But you know, I don't know if you guys have you know, like Google News on your phone or on your computer. You, know, you get like the science highlights from the day. I look at the science highlights for the day, and like three quarters of them are like, that's crazy. That can't be real. And maybe I'm just a cynic, or maybe you know, it's, we're in this kind of world. 